Hey Luke here from Fluke Sky Surfing, welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to explain how I've made my hot wire cutter. So a hot wire cutter will cut through foam and for me personally I use it to cut through expanded polystyrene and I use that to make my surfboard blanks or hydrofoil blanks and I thought that I'd make a video explaining how I did it. I basically got on YouTube myself and looked at a few different other videos on how they'd made their hot wire cutters and then and through a bit of trial and error, I made a few adjustments and I've made something that is working for me. So I thought I would share it. If you're looking to cut some foam yourself, then you can follow this video to make a DIY version of a hot wire cutter at home with, you know, really inexpensively and it works just great. So let's get into it. So this video will separate into three parts. We'll talk about the construction of the bow itself and how it works. And then we'll talk about the power supply. So different options that you could use and then some final tips, things that I've worked out through my trial and error of using this particular bow that we have here. So let's talk a little bit about the construction and how it works. Firstly, how it works. As you can see, this is a bit of a Mad Max style looking jerry rigged device. Um, not exactly proud of the way it looks, but it is functional and that's the main thing. And so the way that it works is you just have a, a form of power supply, something that will you know, push electricity through these two different wires going to either side of a bow. So we've got one wire, you know, and another wire over here. And then to complete the circuit, we have this nichrome wire that spans in between those two wires. And when electricity is passing through this, this is a high resistance wire, something similar that you would find in a toaster oven. When electricity tries to pass through it, gets hot and it can get red hot and so what that means is once it gets hot enough you can pull that through EPS or pull it through other types of foam really really easy so very simple idea but works really well the construction of the bow could be any shape you can see what I've done here I've just got a simple couple of pieces of timber a simple join here a few bolts this could be bigger or smaller this I built this specifically for me because I know that a lot of the foam that I'm cutting is around about 12 inches or 300 millimeters wide so it's the perfect width to give me a little bit of wiggle room either side like I said you could really build this out to any size that you want keeping in mind that the bigger you go the more power you need to push through this high resistance wire and keep it hot in the center particularly where it's dissipating all of that heat as it pulls through the foam now, the rest of the bow is just a handle and a plate. This is really just to handle it. You could have anything here, it's really not important. Uh, just some way to be able to support it on both sides uh, as you start cutting through the foam. One of the key elements of this particular bow is that when this comes, when the power supply comes down into this area, we just need good connection points. So really making sure that this piece of wire I've put um, you know, a washer on there, a couple of bolts, if you can see that, a couple of nuts, sorry, through a bolt that goes through the other side. And that connects to a hook, which I've just made out of a bent nail. I, I got that idea from somebody else. It's actually an S. Not sure if you can see the, the top of it in there, but that's an S that goes around the nut and comes out and creates a hook for this spring. And then the spring, is really a pretty key part of it because as this wire gets hot, it expands so it gets longer and you need the, the spring to really take up the slack as it's getting hotter. This keeps this as a, as a good tension while you're pulling through the uh, EPS or through the foam. Because if, you, if it doesn't take up that slack, it'll start to expand, it starts to get sort of wobbly and, and it's uh, a lot harder to cut. You can see right now that that spring actually doesn't have enough tension on it and it's not really going to take up much slack. It should be sort of pulled more like that, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video, why that looks like that now. And then on the other side, we've got the same thing. It's just a nut with the connection to the wire and uh, bolted through. So really quite simple. The wire itself is 12 gauge electrical wire. So this is just, this is a solid core wire and this is just not regular electrical wire that you'd use in a house. So I've just stripped it out of its jacket. I pulled one from each side and that's what we're looking at here on the side of the bow. The nichrome wire, you sort of have to buy a big roll of it. I bought this off Amazon 
you know, I've got a lifetime supply here. This has never broken this wire. I haven't had it break a single time, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with the rest of this, but um, this, I am gonna to have to look up exactly what gauge it is, and I'll leave that in the description of this video because it took me a while to choose this gauge wire because what you're looking for is something that is thin enough that it's gonna get hot as you pass the electricity through it, and thick enough that you're not constantly having to replace it all the time because it keeps snapping. So um, I will put the link, well not a link, but just a, the exact product that I used there in the description of this video. And I think that is it for the construction of it. Simple design, easy to make, uh, and you know, basically free. You know, this wire I think it was $10 or something, um, and a few little components there, and some wire that I had laying around. So really simple and easy to make at home. So now let's talk about the power supply. So this is something that I had to play around with a little bit. And so I just want to take you through my thought process while and my trial and error. So you can sort of play around with how you want to do it as well. So the very first thing I did was I bought this hot knife. So the hot knife is really great at cutting foam just as is. It's already got a power supply. It's got a trigger for on and off. It's also got a sort of a dimmer there to, to change the amount of power put in, push through it and the temperature of the knife itself. And so it came with a plate that you can connect to this section instead of the blade. And I thought, okay, well, let's mount it onto here. So mount on the plate then connect the hot knife like this, and then connect it to the two wires, pull the trigger, and then we should be, you know, everything should be working. But this just had nowhere near enough energy. It couldn't even get that wire warm, it wouldn't cut any foam at all by the time it went through this wire and down and onto that, onto the nichrome wire. <clears throat> and so, bit of a fail even though I thought it was gonna be a great idea. So then I thought, let's just try the 12 volt car battery. So this is just an old car battery, not really great to have in a car. It's, a, it's literally an old one that was being pulled out of a car. Um, and I thought, let's just connect it straight up because I've been told that, that you don't need any anything in between. So basically all I did was take some 12 volt wire, like so, and then just join it onto here, sorry, not 12 volt, 12 gauge wire like this, and then just clip it on like that, so that it's just held in place, and then joined it to these wires here, and immediately, this wire got hot. It was that simple. It, it just worked perfectly. And so I was able to do some hot wire cutting just with a, just taking the wire from each point to positive and negative, Nothing in between, no switches, no dimmers, nothing, just connected to the car battery and it would cut foam. The problem was it wouldn't cut the higher density foam that I wanted. So here are the two different types of foam that I cut. This is a lower density EPS. You can see it's really quite soft. It would cut this no problem, even at that full width. And that's just with the 12 volt car battery. But this higher density foam, which is around about four pounds per cubic foot, that's one pound per cubic foot. You can see it's far more dense. It wouldn't cut this, particularly at this width, which is my typical cut. And so I thought, okay, I need more power. But if you're doing some lightweight EPS, I really think that the 12 volt battery would be sufficient, especially if you just have a, a sort of a battery maintainer on there. Um, that would probably be enough just to continuously run that thing. The What I was trying to get away from is some of the videos that I was watching, they have a switch, a dimmer switch, um, you know, a 12 volt power supply, like all of this, all these components. And I thought, you know, I don't really want to spend all that money on building this thing. I just want to cut a bit of EPS. And so I was trying to think about other ways I could do it. Um, and so now knowing that I needed more power than the 12 volt car battery, I thought, what have I got laying around in all of my random stuff? Uh, and so I started pulling out all these different power supplies for all sorts of things um, that were just in my electrical box. And I came across this. And this is an old laptop charger. And 
if I, I I'm going to pull it off so I can show you exactly the voltage and amperage that it has because this cuts the high density foam and the lighter density foam and it just continu continuously runs. I just plug it in and it just keeps cutting and cutting and cutting. So it's actually worked really, really well. And a lot of people probably have one of these laying around in your electrical drawer as well because, you know, um, like everyone, you end up with this big pile of old electronics uh, rummaging around the house. And so let's have a look right now at what that is. So the input is 100 to 240 volts at 1.5 amps and the output is 19 volts at 4.7 amps. I'm not sure if you can see it's very small there but that's what it is. So it's 19 volts at 4.7 amps and that really worked for me. So if you can get something similar to that I think um, it will probably work as well. You wouldn't need any more energy than that I don't think. Like that would still even probably do twice the width so at the 19 volts but uh, what i was hoping to get was around about the 12 volts 5 amps because the 12 volts sort of 2 amps wasn't quite enough but this 19 volts 4.7 amps was just spot on like luckily for me i just had happened to have an uh, old charger that had around about that amperage and voltage but anyway that is what I ended up with. And like I said, it's really just keeps on, keeps on working. So if you've got something like that, that's really simple. Now I don't want to pull this completely apart, but this is the original wire that's coming out of the laptop charger. And then it goes, so it just goes up to here. And then I've just spliced out the, the, red, the, uh, the black and white wires out of here. So I've literally just pulled them out, like pulled the jacket back on this wire, spliced out to either side and just separated them. And that's all that I've done there. So, um, you know, you might have red and black or red and white or whatever, but you just, as long as there's a current coming from one goes to one way and one goes the other way, it doesn't even matter which way, it just has to create this circuit in order to create the heat in the nichrome wire. Now let's talk about some final tips. So one thing, so I would say the, the biggest problem with this bow is has been the spring. So what happens is as you know, the current is passing through that, that spring starts to get really hot as well. And it starts to lose its tension. And so the first spring that I had on was this one. And this, there were no gaps in the coils of this. This was a tight spring, looked the same as that one, except a, a slightly lighter gauge. And you can see it's just completely stretched out. And I ended up sort of wrapping it around, tried to keep it going for as long as possible. But it really, um, you know, they, it stretched out quite quickly. This one's a heavier gauge, so I've chosen a heavier gauge spring here, but you can see it's already stretched right on the corners there, and so I've already started to lose my tens, uh, my tensile strength there, and so it's already, you know, I'm gonna have to adjust it. One thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about how I've built the bow is, this, all I've done with the uh, nichrome wire is make a little loop there, and then I've done that up like a fishing line. So sort of goes back, twists through a loop and twists a couple of times and that's, that's enough to sort of hold that in position. And then on this end, I've just wrapped it around the bolt itself and then done the nut up. And that's enough to hold it in that position. The, um, but back on track here is that choose a spring that sort of has decent tension. You don't want to obviously be snapping this, but that's going to help a lot. Just keep that tension while you're, uh, while you're using it. And you want it to be at least 10 millimeters that it can draw back and, and pull on. So I'm going to have to adjust this one now that that's stretched out a little bit. The other thing that I found was, and it's the same problem, is that I was losing tension here by these joins actually flexing in with time. So the bolts sort of allowing, you know, maybe moving a little bit in the holes <clears throat> and allowing this leg to sort of pull in and then I'd lose tension again. And so I went back and I actually glued all of this. So I glued it all up and bolted it again so I'm not having that problem. The next thing is with this on-off switch. It would be more convenient to have an on-off switch right here somewhere, cut this wire, put it through a switch, and I can flick it on and off and keep this just plugged in permanently. That would definitely be safer and more convenient. The way I'm doing it at the moment is I'm just making sure I've got a place to put this down. I put it down and I immediately just unplug it once I'm finished with it. But of course a switch would be better there if you're making one from scratch. <clears throat> Wouldn't be a bad idea to put the switch in at all. 
And I think that's about it. So hopefully that was helpful. If you're looking to make a hot wire cutter and start cutting some foam, uh, this was working for me. I'm sure there's other ideas and better ideas even out there. I'm not a professional hot wire cutter. I'm just using this to make my surfboards. Uh, but I did want to make this video and share what I've learned making this one. So that's it, like I said, for this video. Thanks again for watching. Luke here from Flukes Kite Surfing, and I hope to see you in other videos.